and gentlemen, just a quick reminder that after our next match, the European Challenger Series head into the finals right here on our stage with the best of three between ninjas in pajamas and departed. Deficio and I will be calling those games, so stick around. But right now, it is time for SK Gaming versus Gambit. And well, this is the final time that these teams will meet this split with a head-to-head -head is currently tied 2-1 uh, in favor of the Russians with both teams at the top end of the table. This is an important match for both of these sides. Whoever wins it will tie top place with Alliance and Fnatic. And it is worth noting that both of these teams have already recorded a loss today, beginning with SK simply being outclassed by Alliance. SK just got outplayed in the early game. Both teams ran this split push combination, but due to good ganks from Shook and Frog and being very strong on Zed, both the Dragons and the early game went in favor of Alliance, and it simply meant SK Gaming with their combo could never start split pushing and they could actually do nothing. And of course, Gambit, well, they uh, generally play stronger at the end of the season. However, early on today, we saw them in an epic clash up against the Super Hot crew, where they got pushed to the limit in a nail biter. And Gambit actually fell behind early in that game, but then they managed to get back in by killing three members of Super Hot crew and taking the Baron. They didn't manage to use the advantage they got, however, and Super Hot crew actually turned it around when Gambit tried to do Baron once again, killing four members and then taking Baron, of course. And Gambit, they defended for quite a while actually, held Super Hot Crew off, but then in the end, with three waves of super, uh, super Minions coming in, of course, and Super Hot Crew staying at the base, they managed to end the game. So what we need to see now, actually, in this game, is if a Gambit will focus on trying to shut down Svenskan like we saw them do yesterday, because what we have seen from SK Gaming is they lose every single time Svenskan is doing nothing early game, and honestly, what they did yesterday against this fiddlestick, with Diamond on things out, just shutting him down completely, it worked for him because Jess is, again, he's, he's in the mid lane, but he's not a guy who's winning his lane by himself. And also Candy Panda, if he wants to play Vayne like we saw earlier today, then he needs Svenskan to help him out early on in the lane. And that's the thing. If SK Gaming pick a weak early game jungler, I don't actually see them do anything against Gambit in the early game. Well, let's check out those starting lineups right now. On the blue side, it is going to be SK Gaming. That means in the top lane is Freddy Svenskeren in the jungle. Jez is in the mid lane. AD Carry is Candy Panda and N-Rated is support. On the red side, we have Gambit Gaming with Darren in the top lane. We have Diamond in the jungle. Alex is the mid laner. Genji, of course, is the AD Carry and Edward on support. So I'm feeling a touch of deja vu here. What are we expecting for picks and bans? Well, again, going into the game, I expect to see SK Gaming do a bit like they did earlier today, fall back on some of their old picks. I'm not expecting too many new ones. I'm not expecting Fiddlestick Jungle. Not expecting Velka's support, actually. I think Gambit really showed how to shut it down yesterday. Mm. So, at least for me, for SK side, Stand Up could potentially be the vein, of course. And then I would like to see them have a strong front line because they're going to be against an AD carry who actually very rarely builds armor penetration. So you, if you have two tanks in his face, they can actually abuse this and force him to change up his build a little bit. Well, of course, we saw Super Hot Crew taking down Gambit earlier on. Do you think Svenskeren would have looked at maybe the Pantheon once again that Impaler pulled out? I hope, because again, Svenskeren on Pantheon, it worked for him every single game. He was always so strong on it, and he had the same ganking pattern. Every single game, he would get level three, walk down to bot lane, help out Candy Panda and raid it, then he would walk up to top lane and back to bot lane. And it worked for them because they always managed to pick up either a flash or a kill, and it got both the top lane and the bottom lane ahead. And uh, so Genja's items earlier on, uh, I'd just like to say we did have a Zephyr on there again this time around. I know, and no less Whisper. And no less Whisper. So that's why, if I, if I was making a game plan against Gambit and I knew that he liked this item build, he's just been running armor up. Yes, I would get two tanks who could run into his face but all the time. In his defense this time around, Super Crew didn't really stack armor up at all, did they? Which is True. why he kind of didn't need it. But you don't need double attack speed item and attack <laughs> speed boots on Lucian. You need attack damage. That, that is kind of true. So what are we expecting overall? I mean, this is a rematch. We all know that. We've all seen it. Everybody is aware of the situation, what happened again. They're obviously going to approach this game. Both teams, especially Gambit, I feel are going to come into this one feeling aggrieved. They're going to go aggressive. Are we going to see like a crazy aggressive Gambit? Because they already lost the Super Hot Crew. And so many times we say, if Gambit just lost the game, you don't want to face them next. Definitely not. And honestly, they just need to do what they did yesterday in the game. Because they every single time SK tried to make a move, Gambit was there to counter it. And also in Champ Select, 
they just picked so much better than SK Gaming because they, the LeBlanc pick in mid lane for Justice did absolutely nothing because we had Orianna for Alex and he outfound him in laning phase. He had more pressure in team fights. So I feel like coming into the champs leg from Gambit's side, they have so many options. Of course, Aatrox is disabled now, so he's not an option for Darren up in the top lane. But still, if they pick like they did yesterday, if we could potentially sing Zhao onto Diamond again, he was so strong on it yesterday. This game earlier today, not the best, but still, what he did to Svenskern in the game yesterday again, if he can do the same here, he will be able to completely shut him down, and therefore also the early game from SK. Well, that noise signals that Champ Select is about to get underway here, ladies and gentlemen. I wonder whether we're going to see Sonar again from Eddie. Didn't work out too well for him earlier on. Those crescendos were not, or what I should call them, what Trevor called them, the crush, 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 crescendos. <laughs> Bit of a Max Bygraves, I'm not sure the, the uh, well, Max Headroom, that's it, isn't it? The old re repeat video. Nobody knows what the hell I'm on about, because that's like before you guys were all born. <laughs> Nevertheless, LeBlanc banned out, Zeke's banned out. We're getting straight back in towards those mid lane champions. Kazix has been removed this time around, actually by SK, while it's been Sven Skeron that's been using it. Yeah, he's been using it, but he's not been doing too well on it. And he's not been able to have the early pressure he likes to, so that's why they banned the way. Same goes for LeBlanc here. Jesus played it. A few times, not been working for him. Played against Alex yesterday, didn't work at all. So instead of giving it over to Alex, they just banned away. So it's actually fun to see two of the picks SK Gaming had in the last game. They're banning them now. Well, Lee Sin's been taken out as well. Copenhagen Wolves actually first picked Elise. First time we've seen it for a while. And uh, we also saw Fnatic going big earlier on today as well. And we heard Janko saying in the interview that he still thinks Elise is very, very strong. Your damage is still very good. Yes, you lack some wave clear late game. Your Dragon control and Baron control is slightly, or is nerfed, but still you have a lot of damage single target. And wow, SK actually banning with Zed here, so not taking any chances because we've already seen Zed twice today. Don't want to risk Alex playing it. Yeah, taking that away from Alex Hitch. Also, Lulu is going to get banned out by Gambit. Almost snuck through there, Jezzes would have certainly taken that one, but it's going to be the Lucian pick first in there for Candy Panda this time around. No vein. So they want to force Genji now onto a different AD carry, of course, and normally from Genji when Lucian is gone, we Go to the likes of Varus, Jinx, of course. They're non-mobile AD carries. So it could be a tactic for SK Gaming here saying, we want to have you on something without a dash so we can catch you out with whatever Leona support or whatever combo we want to play and just try and punish you every single fight and also punish you in the laning phase. The Evelyn may be chosen for Diamond as a champion. And he kind of started back up here in the European LCS, but it will be Eddie on Thresh, it seems. They have just been rotated around at the moment, not locked in just yet. And for a long time, it's been a rule, don't give Diamond Evelyn. Because every single time he plays Evelyn, he's so strong in the early game, applying so much pressure. And he was, of course, the one showing the new build of Evelyn, going mixed of magic damage and attack damage and tankiness. So him locking in Evelyn here, very good start, champs leg wise for Gambit, getting some early pressure now. Well, they are locked in, so we'll see whether the Thresh Prince can pull out his hooks like he was last week at the moment oh quick locks for sk gaming this time around renekton and nearly fast picked so again with the blank being banned away jesus he want to fall back on the long range poke champions for him nearly has been a very strong pick and generally when he's been playing it as long as he gets the farm he wants in laning phase he can land the spears before the team fights every single time. And SK have won a lot of games with him actually playing the Nidalee. So I like the pick here. Of course, it's picked blind, so Gamble will have the choice now or the chance to at least counter it. It could potentially be Rise mid because Nidalee is not able to punish you. So you're going to farm as Rise, and you're going to be very, very strong in the late game. And we all know what happens. You don't want to deal with the late game Rise when he's having five or six items. Well, Alex insta lock that Rise. We saw him last week playing it to great success. This time around, he's got Teleport on him as well. We'll see whether that sticks there. It could, of course, change as the uh, summoners are able to choose their spells later on. But at the moment, we're waiting to see what Genja's going to go with. Well, shock. It's going to be Varus falling back on him. You love this item to build the pulls out in Varus. We don't know, talk I about know. it. At least not yet. Let's wait like, to <laughs> see when he builds it, and then we can look at the situation. Don't have to talk about it yet. But with, Var with the Varus here, they're going to have at least a decent engage combo with Evelyn, where you combine, of course, the ultimate from Varus, and then Evelyn comes in, or the other way around, set up some good CC, and then Ryze can come in and follow up with a lot of burst damage. Edward taunting at the moment. We do see Pantheon, though, so Svenskoren is going to return back to that jungle that was so successful for him, and Leona also being picked up by N-Rated. So, I like the fact SK now, actually, we think alike. 
We want Svenskan here on Pantheon, so he can get some early aggression going. That's also why the first pick, the Lucian, so they force Gendion to a champ without a dash. So when Grand Skyfall comes down in his face, there's absolutely no way for him, unless he's having Flash, to escape out of it. And also with Leona, of course, same scenario, pop the ultimate in his face, force him to either blow the Flash or get caught, and then there's a chance SK Gaming can just pile onto him and kill him. So the whole champ select here from SK Gaming, very nicely planned out saying we want to make sure we get this AD carry and then of course we've also banning away the car 6 we can then take Pantheon so I like this for SK Gaming strong lanes and also very good ganking setups they have well ironically with that Kha'Zix ban and the Lee Sin ban it kind of forced Svenskeren onto the champion that he should be playing in the first place I feel that maybe that ban was purposely done by Freddy he's like no oh, what you are going to play is this I'm going to angle you towards it we are also going to see the classic battle in that top lane Renekton versus Shivana. And I almost feel like you with this lane setups that Svenskan is going to be too busy. You want to go up top lane, he want to help shutting down Shivana early on with Renekton, of course, pushing him into the third. He wants to go down bot lane, kill Genja, together with, of course, Enraided and Candy Panda, locking him down with all the CZ. And mid lane wise, he want to make sure Alex is not getting free farm. Because against the Nidalee, 1v1, Nidalee is not going to do anything to Rise. He's just going to farm away all the time. So the Gambit combo here is going to scale really well into the late game. Where the combo from SK Gaming, of course, you have Pantheon and Renekton, both are going to fall off when you come to the late game team fights. So it's going to be a race for time, at least for SK. They want to make sure early on they win. Well, this is a battle for the top spot, remember. Fnatic and Alliance are already there with 14 wins, 10 losses, and both of these teams currently sat on 13 wins, 9 losses. Whoever gets this will tie that top spot going into the final week, and that is a super week next week, of course, with 16 games going on on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday next week. So it's going to be a big one, which sets this game up to be a mouth-watering finish for the LCS, of course. Don't forget, there is Challenger Series to follow. A best of three between Ninjas in Pajamas and Departed. They will be taking place on the stage right behind us just after this game finishes. So lots of action still to go. Potentially four more games. And I can tell you, everybody that's involved in this is excited about that one. <laughs> thank well, you, thank you. This game, at least, I can guarantee we're going to get a lot of action just from the get-go, because again, you have this early game combo. We have Svenskan on Pantheon, where you can set up stuff early on. You have Gambit, who wants to try and hold off the early game. Don't want to, of course, risk giving up too many kills, maybe even objectives to SK. And then they just want to go to the late game. They want to get farm on Shivana, want to get farm on Alex, of course, who actually is bringing the teleport here, so he's going to be able to at least roam around the map a little bit, maybe counter gang if Svenskan is jumping and diving towards the bottom lane. Then he can teleport to the turret, of course, and join in. Well, we'll see how this one works out. We just saw... In fact, we've seen quite a few Nidalees today now. We have. Think of it. We've seen a fair few in this mid lane working out very well. Gambit are looking for, to go for a bit of an invade here, of course, with Rise. You could get that Rune Prison down early with the Thresh Hooks. There's a lot of capability to land your stuns in there. Diamond going to peek. Yeah, you can always scout with Evelyn in stealth, of course. So SK, they don't know they're in this bush yet. But if they come too close, we can land the Hook, Rune Prison, of course. And then there's a first spot for Gambit. There's a spear, so they're spotted. Yeah, Alex gets spotted in that bush. He takes the spear. Not too sure whether he'll show himself just saying it was just me, guys. That's all you caught, which is what he does. But the rest of the team, they're not going to focus on this one. Darian has yet to go back. We'll see whether he heads top. He looks like he will be going north. So it looks like Gambit with that single spear have had their entire level one strategy shut down. So Gambit also want to make sure actually they have standard lanes, even though they are slightly in favor of SK Gaming because they have Evelyn. So you want to make sure you can apply the pressure early on. Lane swapping against Evelyn is a very effective ta uh, tactic to make sure you always know where she is because you force her to either dive somewhere or go down and defend in one lane and doesn't really have any pressure in the mid lane. Well, Genji gets himself into position. Those wards are still not going to be available until the two minute mark. We are on 4.4 of course and we've seen some Interesting picks coming out already today. Of course, if you've not been watching, there's been a bunch of Xerath being played. Not a great success, though. 0% win rate on that one. Looks like Diamond's going to be starting out on the red buff, and it's a blue start for Svenskern. And looking at starting items, we have the Ruby Crystal onto Edward, which actually is one of the most effective starts for supports, because it means on the first back you can get your Sidestone, sell your Trinket Ward and get the Sweeping Lens, and therefore you can deny vision from the enemy, and you also have a lot of easy vision for yourself down in this bottom lane. 
against Pantheon though, they're gonna need some deep wards, and Edward being very aggressive here from the start. Yeah, putting that flay down on Candy Panda, meanwhile though, Genja doesn't return any damage, continues to keep his farm going. Missed the last hit on that final one there, but Candy Panda nevertheless did get a good bit of damage down on towards him. There is the uh, Relic Shield being picked up by N-Rated this time around, and we don't see any GP10 items for Eddie, so don't expect him to be clocking up that gold. Of course, went with that health item, the Ruby Crystal, to try and stack himself in towards the uh, sight scene early on. Yeah, so again, not getting the early gold, but when he is having this, uh, when he has the sight stone, he won't need to invest in wards, where invaders still have to buy them. So they're going to go more, should be going even when it comes to gold here. And let's, of course, see how the laning phase will go, because we know Genjian Varus is actually very strong, strong on him in lane. He's very good at landing his Qs. So we can see if Gambit can apply some pressure here. Evelyn, though, Coming in towards this mid lane early, remember Rune Prison from Rice is going to be instant CC. Going to try and lock him down here, Jezzin instead will take a better poke, does take a quick blast from Alexic. Meanwhile Svenskoen tries to return it, down on towards the bottom, Eddie getting caught out, but the Zenith Plane did not land from N-Rated. They get the hook back on Svenskoen, Genja not really got the damage to turn this one back around though. So I absolutely love the fact that Svenskoen is doing the jungle route we know he always does on Pantheon. He level 3, he walks bot lane every single time, forcing the flash out of Genja. Again, he couldn't pick up Lucian, so there's no dash onto him. And that's exactly what SK wanted to do. No flash now, so Genja needs to be very careful every time he moves forward to get a CS, because if Svenskan is nearby, and Raider can engage onto him, lock him down, and that's going to be first spot for SK. Well, in that mid lane, it was fairly even. Still is going that way. In the top lane, Freddy, while well, he's bullying out Darian, pushing him on towards that tower. But Darian is still keeping up the farm pretty well, despite the fact he's pushed on that tower. We're not seeing a great deal of uh, losses between them. Of course, this is a battle that will continue, as you would expect. Shivana, of course, always becomes slightly stronger as we hit the 12 mark. Yeah, so for Shivana, it's just a fight to get enough CS and also avoid losing your turret too early because of. Again, Freddy's gonna push this wave into the turret again and again, get some damage onto the turret every single time there's a big enough wave, then he's gonna back off and do the same. And that's where we need to see if the junglers wanna join in. Pantheon can come up and dive onto Darien. Pantheon is a very good jungler to dive with because you can block some of the tower hits, of course. And then, of course, with Freddy here being able to tank with his ultimate, so SK have the setup to gank up in this top lane here, and Evelyn should be needing the level 6 before you can really see a good gank onto Freddy because Evelyn needs to slow. Of course, Shivana is not bringing any CC. Well, as it stands, we did see the pressure from Candy Panda and N-Rated down that bottom lane, but they have been alleviated. Genja's keeping that farm going, keeping up well, very well with Candy Panda, and actually it's a very even lane down that bottom area. Meanwhile, this mid lane, we can see the spears not quite landed from Jezza. I think he expected to take that minion down and land the spear. Yeah, but Gambit is just happy leaving Alex in this mid lane, just farming away, because the more fun oh, with Rice. Yes, Nidalee is going to be strong in the late game when it comes to poking, but in a straight up fight, if Gambit manages to engage onto SK Gaming, then Rice is going to do so much more. So they're happy enough having him farm away. He picked up the boots as his first item, so he's obviously going to dodge the spears and also helps him set up ganks here because he's going to have more movement speed to get in range, land his running, uh, rune prison, and then Diamond comes in. Diamond's taking a peek. Of course, with those boots, he can close that gap, as you mentioned. but. Jez is not falling for this one, staying very much out of range of that rune prison. Down in the bottom lane, not much is happening here. Both AD carries farming pretty well. We should have more focus actually on the junglers because that's where we're going to see something. Top lane wise again, Darren is just going to try and stay safe and farm. He actually recalled already. Freddy staying in the lane. Bottom wise, Genja's going to land smoke and now going on to Edward. Edward taking a lot of damage from this time around. Has to use that exhaust, but he's not going to get away from this one. He's going to get locked down. Who will get the first blood? It will be Candy Panda and SK Gaming with a great play on the bottom. Started off by Enrated. Yeah, no flash on to Edward here. He had to use it on the gank from Svenskorn early on. So very good engage from SK Gaming here. Edward didn't manage to actually stop Enrated coming on towards him. So very nice pickup and a little bit too over aggressive from Edward. Very aggressive. Pushed up deep and make him pay. So, how will that convert this lane? Currently, it's a 10 CS advantage for Candy Panda, as well as that kill. It means they're going to get some damage down on this turret as well, before everyone returns. It's not going to be a great deal, but it's going to be enough. At least get some damage here, get the turret lower and lower. In the end, if they do their dive, they love to do with Svenskorn, they can then take the turret afterwards and rotate to Dragon. But first, Darren getting some good damage onto Svenskorn here and forcing him away from the blue buff. Yeah, which he did start on, remember, which means it's just spawned. 
Diamond and Darren close by. Alex is also rotating around. Jezzes is coming in. That spear will be close to speed to stealing it away, but he may well have to force Vince going to smite this one. But none of the junglers are level 6 here, so Diamond won't have his ultimate to put down. Jez is just trying to poke away with the spears, and now SK seems to be forcing Gambit out. Yeah, that spear from Jez is may well have forced Diamond to have second in thoughts on this one. He will back away. It means they're going to return to that top lane. Jez will take this one safely. They have that ward coverage. They know that they are safe to just finish this one off. Jez takes it with the spear. We do have the sweeping lens now onto Edward, so let's see if Gambit can actually set something up down here in the bottom lane with Alex either teleporting down or, of course, Evelyn just walking down, not going to be spotted by all these green wards. So that's why we see a pink ward here. Issue for SK is the fact he's actually spotted out. It's more important than you normally would think, but it simply means for Gambit, they can actually walk in and clear it when they push this wave up. Well, Alex's first back, of course, does get the tier and the catalyst. Ideal items to start off with on that first back for Alex. It, it couldn't be any better. It's going to be a little while for that tier to stack up. Around about 20, 27 minute mark, I'm, I'm going to go with. I'm going to guesstimate. Just the fact he's getting the tier early, of course he could have backed before, just bought the tier and then returned to laning phase, but he decided to stay and farm up, so now he's having both Catalyst and tier. But he's again, now the time or the, the ticking time bomb rises, it's gonna start, because he's gonna stack up this tier, of course, and once it's fully stacked, he's gonna upgrade into Seraph, and he's just gonna be so, so strong. Well, we saw it with Mimer earlier on, of course, he just managed to just keep getting that free farm going on, but... Genja on Varus has got a very good win rate, he does really well on this champion, Head with Edward on Thresh, it is a good combo for Gambit. It is, and he's going to be against a combo, however, or a composition that's going to jump on him and have the ability to jump on him every single team fight. But that might actually be in favor of Gambit, because if SK invests so much onto killing the AD carry, Rice is going to be left untouched, Shivana is going to be left untouched, and of course, Evelyn is to do all the damage in the late game team fights. Okay, just does like those caster. AD carries and this one seems to foot, uh, suit him best. He's gone with the uh, pickaxe's first diamond. Diamond is going to come down. He needs to try and reset the balance down in this bottom lane. Of course, that kill on Edward was the only kill of the game so far. Candy Pan is in danger of getting caught with a hook there. He's just lingering off the side of the minions, and Edward may well feel like pulling the trigger. I think he's going to bait him into this one. Look at the pings here. Sven's gun is pinging. He's coming towards this bot lane, so they want to set something up themselves. He's closing it. He should be in range now for his ultimate. And here he goes. Don't forget there's a teleport for Alex if he wants to get involved. There's going to be Svenska and jumping on this one. Chain of Corruption comes out. Svenska is taking too much damage, as was Edwin. Edwin gets taken down. There is Alex is joining the party. Candy Panda is going to be the focus. It's a one for one so far. And Alex is with his overload run. He's going to jump straight on towards Candy Panda. Now, when rated, he's running straight towards the enemy turret. He's in trouble. Piercing Arrow comes out. Kenji's just going to chase this one down and finish it off with a couple more shots. Hail of Arrows is available if he needs it. He's just waiting to pull the trigger. He's actually been pulled away for a long time here by Enrated. That shield's going to help out as well. No oh, way! He get him. Genji, you knew that the shield was going to be no enough, man, surely. No, man, he needs to one of He needs to just walk him. in and hit it. I think, actually, Alex may steal this one away. Oh. No, finally, Genji gets it. It took a while! But nevertheless, it's 3 to 1 for Gambit. It did mean, actually, Jesus could use a lot of time hitting this turret in the mid lane, so getting a lot of damage, almost actually killing it, but Alex going aggressive. Well, it took so long that Alex got overload back off cooldown to come back and face the Jesus in down. that mid lane. He did lose the turret, though, so 3 to 1 kills, losing a turret is actually an advantage for SK. Yeah, but getting two kills onto Varus, of course, is going to help a lot here when they start to poke up. Till the, or the, till the first dragon when they start these mid-game fights. And of course, getting a kill onto Ryze, very, very nice for them. But losing the mid-turret can be very, very deadly for him because it means Alex is now forced to just stay here and defend it. Otherwise, Jesses can just constantly push it up and even get damage on the next one or start roaming around. So, ward on dragon, that may well be the next focus. We are approaching that 12 minute mark, so we may well start thinking about this one. But Gambit have got themselves a couple of kills on the board. They're gonna start feeling a little confident. SK, of course, with the gold lead, as you would expect with that tower down and spears are starting to flow in towards Alex Hitch. Darian, well, normally we see him farming between the towers, as does Freddy, but neither of them fancy it this time around up against a Evelyn in the jungle or a Pantheon jumping from the sky. Yeah, but Sven's gonna have been using so much time on the bot lane, so he's never actually been up top here to apply any pressure onto Darren. So he's just farming away, trying to defend his turret. Again, the longer he can hold it, the better it is, of course, for Gambit, because once the turret actually goes down, it opens up for Freddy to start going down to his team, force something with them as five members with the Nidalee, of course, poking away, or it opens up for him to pressure all the way down. But now Grand Skyfall got cancelled. It was cancelled, Genja 
Had that lantern thrown out. This is actually a death sentence being thrown on towards N Rated. There's a lot of damage being placed on him. It's a good solar flare though. N Rated replying on this one. He is going to get taken down or is he? Genja being stopped Holy. and stunned by Sven Skerin. And now Candy Pan is just culling away down that bottom lane. Now Sven Skerin's in trouble. Alex Hitch tries to come into this one, but he just goes straight into Diamond. A quick flash from Alex Hitch chases that one down. It was a two for one, this time in favor of SK. And Jesus could definitely have flashed after Svenskern here to help him out. Alex was very low, it would be easy for him to take him down, but instead he actually stayed, waited for his cat form to come back up, and then jumped over the wall. So too late for him. But Dragon, however, is the target for SK, and Freddy also took down the top turret. Yeah, the Dragon also going to go down for SK. So while Gambit chased the kills, SK are taking those objectives, and it's seemingly working to a very good game plan so far. They have themselves a three thousand gold advantage just 13 minutes into this game yeah so they're using the early game combo pretty well here getting of course winning the lanes getting some decent enough ganks in from Svenskin even though he actually died twice he still managed to get free kills onto Candy Panda here so that's very important for SK yeah the top lane is we haven't really had chance to triple look at Doran. those guys the triple Doran's blade were picked up by Freddy a while ago but he's now completed that Sunfire cape meanwhile Darian well he hasn't quite got the Sunfire cape complete but he also went for the triple Doran's items Let's have a look at the mid laners. We can see Rod of Ages now finally completed by Alex Hitch. Jez has had that Athens and Holy Grail about two minutes ago as well. AD carries where you can see Candy Panda is slightly ahead. Starting to stack out that Bloodthirster already. Genja yet to go back and complete that item. Went for the Berserker Greaves as well. Yeah, and Genja is of course going for the Infinity Edge as always for Genja here. So with Blood First, the early advantage for Candy Panda. He's going to have more damage in these early fights than Genja will. So. Advantage SK Gaming, Dragon of course went down, so we won't see a team fight at least for Dragon here in the next few minutes. We're gonna wait for it to spawn and then possibly see some continued laning phase. Up in the top lane though, Freddy, we talked about if the turret went down, he can either now join win with the team to apply some pressure in the mid lane or in the bot lane, whatever he decides to actually do, or he can just continue pushing all the time up here and forcing someone from Gambit to react, go up and try and stop him. Otherwise, he's just gonna take a turret more. Freddy is bullying out this lane, as you would expect with Renekton in those first 10 levels. We'll see how the tables turn, whether Darren is even able to. At the moment, nothing really happening between those two top laners. <laughs> Freddy did get caught slightly in the tower range, which means he's forced to back away. Back, back, back down in this bottom lane. We are seeing once again, a Diamond is having to focus down here. But Sven Skoen is close enough that Skyfall could be used. If he heads towards the top half of the jungle, he's out of range. And we also just saw SK actually pinging on to Alex the second his teleport was ready. So they know he is having teleport. Jesus was just saying he's here in the mid lane. Be careful though, he can actually teleport down if something should happen. Could be one of the reasons Sven's going to decide to back off and say, okay, I'm not going to jump in here. Because Genja, yes, he's having the flash ready, but this is the time where SK, SK Gaming can just gank him all the time. Well, he certainly does have that. At the moment, we do see Genja with that 2 1 2 again, keeping that pressure off the turret. SK Gaming. Alex Hitch using that overload to keep the minions away. Jez is doing a very good job at pushing, punishing in that lane. But again, Diamond this time has snuck unseen into this. But Sven's going again, he's close enough. Still unseen. Diamond got around the backside of them. Has got that ultimate available if they gather together, which I feel they will. There's the chain of corruption. There's the barrier already used. Teleport coming in. This is going to be. Uh, Get Alex Hitch joining the party on towards Sven Skerin. That solar flare is not going to be enough to save the day. And it will be two easy kills for Gambit this time around. And there's nothing worse when you're ultimating in the Pantheon and the fight is already lost. So you land and you just instant die. So Gambit here setting it up. SK Gaming knew there was a teleport on Alex and yet they didn't actually have a chance to react here. Just teleporting in. It does mean, however, the mid lane turret now for Jesus is doing a lot of damage to it. Genja almost going down to the tower. Calculated, I believe, is uh, the phrase they'd like to use there. But that was half the hit point shredded off that mid turret by Jez. It's every time Alex goes looking for those kills and does get them, they are losing a lot of damage on those turrets. But now the bottom lane turn is gone. It means Ginder can then rotate to the mid lane. He can start wave clearing, forcing Jez to never actually get close to the turret here. So it's fine for Gambit, of course, getting two kills, getting a turret more than worth it for them and now you actually see Edward going towards the mid lane while Genja might try an AD carry gank up here in the top lane. Oh, he's gonna head up there, Spear lands on Alex Hitch. I want to talk about Freddy because he's been pushing in this lane every single time. And he goes back, gets those golems. It's a big gold advantage starting to build up for him. 
if we were to look at the gold items, we'd see how much it's stacking off. But now, right now, we're going to see in that top lane, Freddy is going to get caught out. Genja's coming in. I don't think he's going to be able to get away from this one. He said he wants to try and turn that kill back on Darian. Genja will get himself the kill. I love Genja. He's one of the only AD carries who's going to walk from base and just decide to gank the top lane. He could have gone mid lane and started wave playing. Instead, he walks up there, picks up a kill now. So very good move by him, actually. Already on 3-1-4. So he's going to have a lot of gold. And Infinity Edge already completed. Yeah, that Infinity Edge. Big, big item. Big power spike for him. Bottom lane, though. It's going to get ganked up down here. So SK Gaming all roaming around from this one. Eddie can't defend it. And because Genja showed himself in that top lane, as he said, gets himself that kill, he may well lose his turret out here. Darian comes down to try and counter this one. They force SK away. Oh, that death sentence so close to catching on Sven. So all the turrets now in the lanes for Gamma are actually fairly low. It simply means for SK Gaming, if they can continue pushing up here, they will get some damage and will be able to take them down. Or if they win the fight here after this dragon when it spawns, it means they can just go to whatever lane they decide to, and that's going to be an easy turret. So a lot of gold for SK potentially very soon. Well, SK are preparing for this dragon fight. You can see that Freddy is sticking around. He's taking the walls and then going to come in there. Meanwhile, the rest of SK do back away quickly just to return in time for that dragon to spawn. Darian is off down this bottom lane. He's pushing the wave in. Of course, that middle, uh, sorry, the bottom inner turret is outer turret. It's the word I'm after. What's taken down It's the inner turret he wants to focus on. He's actually trying to do what Freddy has been doing to him the whole game. But look at this. The jungler sat it there. Spence Karen instead stole the gold away from Darian. And he didn't actually take too much damage, so it's all right because, again, Dragon in 20 seconds. It's very important. Darren is healthy for this one. The rest of Gamma, though, are very far away. They have some good pink wards in their own jungle, but that's about it for the moment. Why did Svensko not choose to jump across onto him there? There was a 2v1 situation. Well, if you already used to jump, he would rely on Freddy to get in range. Yeah, okay, they could actually have forced ultimate from there, and you have a point. Yeah, I don't understand why they didn't go for that one. Nevertheless, it would have been a top laner down and almost certainly would have forced the dragon fight, but instead they didn't really have the vision, maybe. They have shoved the mid lane and the bottom lane out, but Gambit already and waiting for this dragon fight. This is going to be the first 5v5, I feel. Who is the stronger? Well, let's see if SK Gaming, with the engage, they really want to be the ones to start the fight just right in the face of Genji here, piling on him with Grand Skyfall and Enraider, just Ooh. taking him down. That Jess is now. Yeah, Jess is with these spears. If he's having enough time to poke away, already hitting twice, very, very good for SK. They're already backing away. They realize they can't fight this one. They've lost half the hit points off Edwards. You can see Diamond, uh, sorry, Diamond took a big chunk there. Candy Panda, meanwhile, is bought time in the mid lane. So they actually realize we've created a great situation that we can fight for Dragon, but we can also push this mid lane turret. They've taken it so, so low already. Diamond and Darian, they're continuing to keep away on this Dragon. Diamond wants to sneak in and smite this one, I feel. Gambit could potentially still fight for this one. Genja is in the mid lane with Candy. They're actually forcing SK off the Dragon here. But SK still have the good position because they can always rotate to the mid lane. But Gambit have to run all the way around their own blue buff. Good delay tactics here from Gambit. I don't think they have any intention of fighting right now. Their spear does not land. And they have bought enough time that Edward's been back, got himself full health, and is returning. And He's going to be able to push back in here. As you say, that top lane is going to push itself in towards that turret, but I think the turret will deal with that. So this is a battle that is going to have to resolve itself. Genja is in perfect position to fight that chain of corruption down, but he's off at the side. He's all in zone. Yeah, but look at Diamond. He's actually sneaking in towards the red buff, so he's going to pick up the red buff, or he's actually going to skip it for now. He want to get in behind. They want to flank around SK Gaming here and do the engage themselves. There is a pink ward, though. If he comes to come around the side there, they're going to spot him out. And they're going to see him if he gets too close to that bush. He's surely going to realize there's a ping ward in here. Yeah, they've just pinged it. Pinged it, yeah. They ring it, realize that is there. Oh, Alex Hitch has gone off towards the top lane. Has got top teleport, don't forget, so he can join this fight at any time. Realizing they're going to have to clear that wave. Uses the overload, pushes that wave back out. And SK, they're dilly-dallying here. They don't really know what to do. And they spotted Diamond out. They're spam ping on here. Rest of SK are now running towards him because they know Diamond is going to be behind him. They want to catch him out. It could potentially mean the dragon for Gambit, actually. They forced him away, and as you mentioned, Gambit moving to position. And Diamond is yet to be caught out. He's going to come around on towards Candy Panda. Puts a quick hate spike on towards him, but that's a bit of an error. He's going to go straight towards the rest of SK. Yeah. The Cullin lands all across him. A great stop from Freddy, and that is Diamond going down. No smite available, and that Dragon is going to go to SK. Edward was actually in a position to throw the lantern over the wall, but decided not to. Meanwhile, though, Dragon here, SK, they are at least in a position, good position to take it. Only Darren actually there to try and steal it. Meanwhile, though, Rise up in the top lane, just pushing down, but his turret is on full HP. Yeah, he has to try and put something on towards that turret, and that's what he's doing. He's got a long time to get it, but the minion wave is a long way away as well. 
So I don't think he's going to be able to close this turret out. You can see Jez is already making fast tracks up towards his top lane too. He's going to clear out that minion wave. There is the spear and Alex will back away from this one. So another objective gain for SK Gaming. Yeah, but as long as Gambit can stay fairly close and go with their combo with, of course, Raish and Shivana, they should be fine going into the late game team fights. So even giving up the Dragon, yes, it's not ideal, because for them, in their case, it's more important they don't fall further behind than they already are. Jezus claws away, Freddy returns to top lane, and again, they all resume position. Blue buff is up. I'm wondering where the diamond's going to go across. I realize this is a pink one because he got spotted by that vision, and blue buff is going across to Jezus. I don't think diamond's going to get there close enough for, for Jezus just to claw his way and steal that one off him. And let's see now here with Alex how many stacks he's already having on the tier. It's not fully stacked yet. He's on 540 so far, so it's coming there. In a few minutes, as you actually predicted yourself, around the 27 minute mark, it should be fully stacked. And that's where we really see the power of Rise coming in. Going to have a lot of damage and, of course, going to upgrade into Seraph. So he's going to have this good shield as well to stay alive. Four members of SK Gaming in the mid lane. Diamond kind of running interference, wondering whether he's going to try and sneak around the backside of Freddy, but. Phil are going to have to react to this one. Remember that inner turret in the mid lane is already pretty low, so it's possible that they could just try and tank this one down, which is why Diamond's going to have to react to it. They're already pulling Darian down as well, so they want to try and outnumber him in the mid. And look at this. Alexis was actually staying in the base just waiting because he's having home guard, so he can teleport in, and then he can just instantly rush into the fight. That's why he was staying and waiting for something to happen. And Diamond now flanking around once again. Flanking position, gonna try and come around. There's the Cullin being used, but simply massaging them. They are gonna get drawn in. They will take this turret down, but they're now closed in. Diamond gets his ultimate down, catches four members, but is it gonna be enough? Look at the damage coming out there. Chain of Corruption comes through. Jess's spear manages to thread the needle, catch straight on towards him. Freddy now on them. Stun comes in there. Edward forced away. Does manage to land the death sentence. That's gonna be the drop coming in. Is it gonna be enough? Who's he gonna focus on? Edward's taking low. He has to back away. Damn. It is going to be Genja caught at, oh, the Lantern pulled in. Alex Hitch escapes the victory, but well, you can see the inhibitor turret is taking damage. Candy Panda's rotating around, he's found Edward. That was a mistake by Eddie, and they're also going to lose the inhibitor turret for the price. So while they engage from Evelyn, he actually hit four members. Alex was not in a position to join in instantly. The rest of Gambit were not in a position to jump in with Evelyn here, and it simply meant that SK could turn around, get a lot of damage onto Diamond, and then just pile on to the team fight. We saw a very nice ultimate from Enraided, and then SK just followed up with it and showed that their combo in this mid game fight is stronger than Gambit's. So they do take away that blue buff. Actually, it's a light. I think Alex managed to steal it towards the end there. And it is going to be Gambit trailing behind 6,000 gold. We've seen them. Super Hot Crew doing the same thing, but let's check out this fight. You notice you're up in the top lane, both top laners are gone. Engage from Diamond, but there's no follow-up from the rest of Gambit because Alex, he was running there. Here's the ultimate from Genji, hitting absolutely nothing. And from there on, Evelyn is dead. It's too easy now for SK Gaming. Freddy comes in, and of course the ultimate from Enraided was already used, so he's not going to be able to pile onto here, but we have the Grand Skyfall, and just locking up members, landing down from Svensko, and yes, Enraided will die for it, but getting a kill onto Genji, of course it's worth it because Later on, they can just take the inhibitor turret. Makes it having to take that lantern. I just flash lantern there. Flash lantern. Clutch plays, maybe. Didn't keep them in the game, though. They are 6,000 gold behind. And as I was about to mention before that replay came up, Super Hot Crew were kind of in a similar situation, but had a great team fight composition. Can Gambit reach that potential? As long as they can just keep stalling the game here, the issue for them is that the inhibitor is open, so SK Gaming can technically take all five members and just push up and get it down. And that's where we need to see Gambit push out some lanes, like we're actually seeing Darren do here. So they force SK not to just group in mid lane. And just as I'm saying it, actually three members are staying in there. And Alex doesn't have teleport. They're going to have to make this one count. They're not going to get it. Instead, Freddy gets on towards that turret, has the Dominus running. But while this is all happening, he's simply buying time for the rest of his team. Four members pushing through towards that inhibitor. He will go down, but the Grand Skyfall lands on Genja. Genja gets popped. Solar Flare goes in. Zenith Blade on Edward. Edward getting locked up here. Jesus throws the spear. He's forced back to the fountain. Inhibitor goes down, SK will retreat. Yeah, SK was in a great position to just rush into this base here with four members. That's why once the dive onto Freddy actually happened, no problem. Grand Skyfall onto Genji. We talked about in Champs like how easy it is for Pantheon to always get onto Avaros. And that's what we see happening here. Inhibitor gone down. And SK Gaming out is looking very, very strong. Well, Candy Pan is pushing the wave. And this top turret 
is, uh, sorry, bottom in a turret is very low as well. Alexic already backing away from this one, not going to have any of that. He will step away and, well, Gambit are oh, floundering once again here. SK Gaming with a big advantage. They now 6,000 gold ahead, but more importantly, it is that inhibitor turret down. 6-2 in turrets. Van Skirmite got caught out here. Maybe he's waited a little too long. We're not going to see Alex going for it. And now SK Gaming, Dragon coming up in 20 seconds. They need to keep the pressure going. Look at this replay here, actually. On to Genya. He caught way out of position by Candy Panda, missing another ultimate. Getting the Lantern, though. And what? then we see Grand Skyfall, Genya already low. Boom, in his face. There's nothing he can do to dodge this one. And Red actually going towards Edward, but didn't have enough damage. Quite work out. Jezzas with those spears has got the death cap complete, along with that. Uh, Athens he had a long time ago. Void Staff almost complete as well. So the spears are really going to start hurting. And well, SK can siege the way through with the calling as well on towards those turrets. But the fact that they've already opened up a hole is going to give them a big advantage. Dragon is available. And it is SK in easily the best position to take it. Yes, yeah, so SK should be able to pick this one up. Look at Alex down the bottom lane. He's trying to do the same thing as before. Darren now going on to Candy Panda. Candy Panda caught out of position completely there, and Darian just chomps his way through. Spear doesn't do a great deal, but now Freddy's involved. He will land that stun. Alex Teach is around the side. I'm not too sure whether he's going to feel the need to collapse onto this one. Instead, he's going to play it safe. And this is bought time for Gambit to take that Dragon. Yeah, Dragon is still up here. All the members for him are actually ready to go towards it. Alex is coming around here. And I like what Gambit is doing here with both Darren and Alex. They're just playing this combo of catch someone out of position. They don't expect us to be here because we're actually behind. We're not the ones who should be making these over-aggressive plays. And it works for them. Well, they're going to try and trade it. I thought they were going to go for their Baron play on the Dragon instead. Dragon has gone to Gambit. That keeps the goal closer than it should be because, simply put, Candy Panda got caught out. And this is the problem for SK. If they get caught with a pick, which Gambit are now going to be looking for every single time, it will put them back in the game. SK are trying to do the same thing though, but it's an obvious position. Well, at least Gambit knows they're here, but it doesn't even matter that you know they're here because you actually want to get in and ward the Baron, and that's what SK are blocking you from doing. So it simply means there's no vision for Gambit here, and they're going towards Darren up here in the top lane. And also, Alex caught out of position. Alex out of position, he's going to get jumped on, pounce the double lock stun. The spear's come through, and now he gets caught with the Zenith Blade. He gets taken down. Darian's going to be the next focus. Solar Flare comes in, he gets locked up. Chain of Corruption from Genja. They have got the tower doing damage for him, but the Colin from the side gets locked on towards Genja, and Edward's getting taken so, so low. Mandrop comes around the side. Edward's going to be the focus along with Darian. Darian taken low. Genja gets popped as well. Candy Panda doing work here. Diamond goes down. It's a double for Candy Panda and another for Sven Skerin. SK Gaming get a four for one. Beautiful coordination from SK. Mandrop coming in from Sven Skerin and Candy Panda with full HP joining in from the side here, picking up the kills. And SK Gaming are just looking. They're doing so well with this because as soon as they got ahead this game, they just managed to constantly punish uh, Gambit, they got all these turrets low, and we actually see the replay starting here. Alex being caught completely out of position. He knew the members were down here, so I'm not sure why he's staying out to farm, but it means, even though he's flashing away, it doesn't even matter, and Vader catching on to him, he's dead, that's it. And from here on and out, you actually see the team fight with four members from Gambit, they're trying to do a good job, with Candy Panda down here at the bottom of your screen, full HP, only using the calling above, and then the Grand Skyfall from Svensson coming in. So many low members, full HP AD carry, and Svensson is just tanking off the damage, and he's joining in, taking off the kills. Where's an AD carry just to stroll around into four players with low hit points? It's, it's like a gold farming session for you right there. And Candy Panda managed to clean up 734 for him, of course, all the damage done by the rest of his team. So, Baron buff picked up by SK. Gives themselves a gigantic advantage once again. And while Candy Panda was caught out once, his positioning in that fight was impeccable. And we just have to give SK Gaming credit in this game for the ability to, even though they would lose some fights, they would always get a turret or get at least a lot of damage on a turret. So they always made sure that whenever Gambit would actually make a mistake, they could then walk up the lane, get another objective for them to get a turret, get a dragon, and always therefore stay ahead. And then once the team fights actually started with this mid-game combo from SK Gaming side, they were just so much stronger and they always managed to catch on to the right people from Gambit. The top inner turret is being pushed in by Freddy. Of course, that inhibitor has respawned and is being pushed in by the other four members of SK Gaming. Gambit looking to try and react, try and defend somewhere, but realizing they've left themselves very much exposed in this mid lane. Darian around the side. I'm not too sure the flanking tactics, what they want here. And instead, 
going to be SK putting the damage down. They do find Darien off there. Freddy putting some damage down onto Darien. Quick poke the Colin on towards him, actually. Edward was also taken low. This inhibitor will drop down, but Gambit's got to be careful they don't lose a member just simply defending an exposed and hit. Yeah, Gambit didn't actually have to do anything on this one. Just let it go to SK. They need to fight under one of the turrets up here in the top lane. The first one will go down to SK, but the next one, that's the point for Gambit where they have to try and win the fight. Either they need to hope SK wants to dive onto them, or they just have to try and get a good engage, catch, like say, Candy Pan out of position with a hook from Edward and just pile onto him. Spear onto Edward, that forces him already down to half hit points. That is the difference that Nidalee can have in this game. Hook lands on towards N-Rated. Not sure they should follow that. Chain of Corruption goes down. They're going to dive in for it nonetheless. Alex Hitch gets around the side here. Jesses has taken very low. He gets popped. They're going to focus on Candy Pallet. The carries are both down. Alex Hitch with a double kill. James chased away by Freddy. Freddy's got the damage to turn this bomb back around. And now Diamond's in trouble. N-Rated with the Zenith Blade. Locks up on towards him. Freddy gets himself a second. Mandrop comes in. Darian gets pounced on. And it's Fenskaran with a kill. It is going to be another 4 for 2 for SK. And the tanks from SK simply cannot die. Freddy on full HP after this fight here. Very good engage from Gambit, however. We had Alex teleporting in from behind, getting onto the carries from SK. That's why they managed to kill them so early. But still, the tanks were left alive. Nobody could actually kill them, so they just won the fight for SK Gaming. I'd love to see the replay, because I want to know why Genja did not follow through on that one. He started off with the chain of corruption. The teleport came back around there, and then Genja backed away. Obviously went towards the super minions, but they could have maybe done a lot better in the team fight and pushed for an objective. Let's check it out. And yeah, notice here, Alex in the base, home guard. He's going to teleport behind SK Gaming once the engage check hits. New content red is not ideal, but they just want to start the fight. And then Alex coming down here from the bottom of your screen, straight onto Jesus and Candy Panda, combined with Darren and Diamond. Back here, Gaines is actually doing a very good job just trying to defend himself and Edward. It's Svenskan, however. Manager actually pick up a kill and then escape, and then Gaines is just walking around. He's in no man's land. Not able to do anything and then up here in the top lane because Freddy was there, nobody could kill him after he used all the damage onto the carries. He just picked up the kill. Why would you chase a jungler into the jungle and ignore the other four players that are fighting for your team? I'm not sure on the Genja's choices there. Maybe he can explain that one better in his interviews like he tends to after the matches. <laughs> well, I do ever like the fact he's actually picking up a Garden Angel. It's really an item he needs against a combo that can pile onto him. We have actually seen SK, at least in the last team fight, ignoring him completely. Just wanted to kill Alex, who came in from behind instead and won the team fight that way. Well, the final inhibitor is now in this bottom lane, and you can see it's SK that clearly want to try and focus on that one. Ward's being placed out. Pink Ward is there. Alex will not clear that one out because he's going to get poked to death if he gets too close to it. Genja's doing a good job. He's keeping the super minions away from this mid lane but SK are ready and waiting to pull the trigger for a second time on towards this final turret. Let's see if SK if they feel confident diving in as long as they can land the spears from Jesus they will force Gambit to fall back a little bit. The thing we have to remember with 35 minutes in there's no last whisper onto Genja that's why he actually couldn't take down Svenskan in the last fight because he's doing no damage to the front line here and SK knows that's why even just one guy can tank away two members from Gambit. Spears continue to go through, not really finding the targets, and nor is that death sentence, actually. We do see Candy Panic taking a bit of poke. Got to be careful they don't get caught with that ruining prison. The culling being used to force Edward down to half hit points. It means he might not be able to get it engaged upon. Here comes the drop. It's going to go on towards Alex Hitch stepping off the side. Diamond's going to be the focus. The tower goes down already. Eddie gets taken down. Now it's going to be the solar flare on Alex Hitch. Diamond's also going to get a pounce on. Darian tries to use his dragon stun to try and jump away, force them away. But SK Gaming are not being beaten back from this one. They're going to go for the inhib and, and well, Gambit, they're simply just being bullied out of this one. Barrier being used for Genja. They're going to try and go back in. They do get Spence going down, but Edward gets quickly focused, as does Genja. And SK Gaming keep on pushing through. They can finish the game right here. And the combo from SK Gaming really paid off. Alex now. He gets caught out. Zenith Blade comes in. Spear finishes the job. And well, would you believe it? The rematch happens. And SK Gaming take themselves victory and join Alliance and Fnatic at the top of the table. 14 wins, 10 losses. So yesterday, SK Gaming played a very weak early game combo. Today, however, Pantheon Jungle, of course, onto Svenska and here, Renekton up in the top lane, and then with Lucian Leona bot lane against Avaros. Very aggressive early game from SK Gaming, and it really paid off for them, because every time they had a chance to pick up a kill, they would, and then it would just go towards this turret, they already dropped them low, get the extra goal, and just pull ahead from Gambit. And when it comes to the real team fights in the mid game, SK Gaming were just stronger. Oh, Gambit, 
shaking hands, take their defeat to SK Gaming, and SK now take themselves to the top of the table once again. It's a three-way tie-up there. It's getting a little bit cluttered at the top of the table right now, while everybody else tries to keep picking up victories. The bottom of the table is starting to look a little bit sparse. Fantastic performance nonetheless, though. SK finally returning to winning ways and actually going with champions that got them there in the first place. Weird enough. They are playing the champions. They started the whole winning streak for them. The champions, they worked for them. They did the same early game we have seen for them so many times the last few weeks when they actually picked up the wins. Svenskan going bot lane at level 3, starting the first gank, forced two flashes. Later on, what happened? And Raider and Candy Panda went on to Edward, no flash, first bot. And it's been working for them every single time they've been doing it in the past week. So I'm just happy to see them fall back on what actually worked. Jis is on Nidalee, of course. Been banned a few times, but this game for him, laning-wise, he went even in farm with Alex, but then he just managed to always push the lane up. He actually killed the mid lane turret on the first teleport from Alex, and then he pushed up to the next one, got it down to like 50% on the second teleport from Alex. So he was just applying a lot of lane pressure. Well, I mean, the teleports kind of worked, but every time, like you say, they just took objectives. And SK, that's all they were doing. And that's exactly where they got the wins in the first place. They had that, what, nine wins in 11 games at one point. Not too sure what the exact stats are now, but they were focusing on objectives, and they were working for them. Whereas Gambit, at the start, you could tell, they were focusing on kills. They wanted kills, of course, and they wanted to try and... I would say kickstart their late game combo. If they could get a few kills onto Alex early on, get some good early items on him. We saw him actually having Tear and Rod of Ages fairly early. So he was at least having a good start on Rise. And they just wanted to make sure they could get into this point where their champions are really going to scale or really going to be very strong before SK could just start rolling over them in the mid game team fights. Sadly, though, because SK managed to respond so well to the teleports, to the ganks, they never really fell behind to Gambit and actually just got ahead. And then with the, again, the mid game combo, they were just stronger. Had the game got 10 minutes longer, Gambit would definitely have had a chance to come back. So four games for everybody next week. This is the end of the LCS for this week. Of course, we do have the Challenger coming up straight after this. Best of three going to be happening. Where do the teams go from this one? They're going to be seeing they've got, what, four days to sit and practice and be prepared for four games back to back. Big Super Week for every single team involved in this one, of course. It is the final Super Week of the Spring Split. Well, for a team like Gambit, who's now lost two games, actually, need to go back and, of course, look at what mistakes have we been doing. Is it our champ selection is Champ selection we think are too weak, or are we just making some risky plays? F try and find out the issues, because we know how good of a team Gambit can be. When they have the good games here, they always... They play so dominant, they can beat every team in Europe, of course. And then SSK Gaming, yes, you won now, but you've actually also been losing some games recently, so you shouldn't just sit back and say, yeah, we're fine, we have already solved our issues. And now the fact they've been falling back to their old style of play simply means there's a lot of footage for the other teams actually to study, to say, oh, we actually know how you play because you've been using this tactic now for a few weeks. And of course, in terms of head-to-head, -head, it means that SK oh, yeah. are now tied with Gambit, so if they were to face each other suddenly in the standings, they're going to have to have a playoff. There could be playoffs, ladies and gentlemen, next week. That's all we're saying. Let's, though, head over to SK's Candy Panda. After that win, we're standing by with Shocks and Quick Shot. Thank you very much indeed, Candy Panda. It was a tough position to be in, but you guys did great. You won this match. Let's go back all the way to the beginning and pick some bands. Because when talking to you guys beforehand, uh, Jess has said, I'm only afraid of a couple of champions that Alex played for the rest, nothing. So what did you guys focus on going into those picks and bands? Well, we tried out the new meta champions like LeBlanc, Kha'Zix, and it didn't work out to us, for us. So we bumped them against Gambit because they're really good on them, and we don't want to have them ourselves. And then those were the only two champions we were concerned of, so we were thinking about what else Gambit plays, and we couldn't really come up with anything, so we bumped Zed instead, which is good against Nidalee. Yeah, and then another thing you guys mentioned was we are really afraid of the early pressure that Diamond can bring upon us out of that jungle. And on a champion like Evelyn, he is normally able to do that very well. But you guys were playing against it very well, even in the team fights. Yeah, we've actually got a replay that comes up to at about 24 minutes. Let's pull that replay up onto your screen right now. What I'd like you to do, Kenny, is just talk me through the engage. Because you guys have got a healthy gold lead by now, and you'll notice that Diamond catches about four of you guys with Agony's Embrace. So let's roll this clip and talk me through the communication, the calling. You know the deal by now. Yeah, so we sieged up mid lane now, and we knew they want to siege us because they have Rise with TP and Eve. But we saw Rise on the ward on the side, so what we did, we went back immediately. So when Diamond came in from behind, he was alone, so we could focus him. And then it's like back and forth, like everyone's flashing out and running out, running in, trying to re-engage. But our team had 
like the Pantheon ult, we still had the Pantheon ult, so we could re-engage now in a second. Yeah, it's running in slow-mo, so yeah. Pantheon's gonna come in behind. Who's yeah. yelling the most? Who's calling yeah, during this? Right now, Svenskron is saying, I ult, I ult, I ult, and then I say, go, go, go. And then we just kill them. Like, we had just more re-engage, more strong re-engage after the initial fight uh, went out. And here I just wanted more KDA, so I went for the kill on Trash. Is this the way you guys wanted to play the composition? Wait for Gambit to engage and then re-engage? Or did it simply just happen that way by chance? Yeah, like, with our comp we had uh, Nidali and Lucian. Okay, like, the way we could engage was tower dive them, but we didn't want to risk it. So we just said, okay, let them engage. I mean... Rice, like Alex did it really well. He always came from the side with Eve and it was really strong. Like in the top fight later on, like we almost die, we almost wipe. So he did it really fine, but in the end, like we had too much of a gold lead that it could really do anything. And once the two enemies were down, we could just go bottom. I like every one of us bought a pink trinket so we can avoid everything around us. So Eve can flank us and then we just close out the game. Yes, did close out the game. Um, very important win with what's coming up the next weeks, of course, for you guys. You guys are now tied for first with Alliance and Fnatic. You lost to Alliance earlier today, though, and also last week versus Rocket. There was a bump in the road. You guys were on the up and then a little bump. So what did you kind of take from that? Yeah, so after I am uh, Katowice, the new patch came 4.4. It changed a lot of champions. It nerfed our preferable combo and like our preferable combos. And then we had to find new stuff. We tried a lot with the meta champions like Kha'Zix, LeBlanc, etc. It doesn't work for us. So this game, we wanted to do it with Alliance already, get back to our old style, to our comfort picks. It didn't work out so well. So we really, really, really tried to do this game with the Leona Pantheon. And it worked out really, it worked out way better than the other games. Like, I think after we were on a, like, 11, like 11 games and we won like nine out of them. The new patch came and it was really bad for us, so we had to adjust to it. Yeah, we have seen before how that can totally mess up the plans of teams, but you guys are adjusting very well. Congratulations once again, and Thank also you. on that first place. And now we're gonna head back over to D&D &D to see where the teams stand in the standings. Thank you very much, Shox. With our 10 games now behind us, you won't believe this. We still have a lot of ties in the table. Of course, first place, as we mentioned, it is a three-way tie. Alliance, Fnatic, and SK Gaming all at 14 wins, 10 losses. And that's, of course, with a win streak for both Alliance at eight and Fnatic at four. Big, big differences could happen next week in Super Week. Fourth place, well, it's a tie again. Gambit and Rocket this time at 13 wins, 11 losses. However, Rocket owns in their head-to-head -head with a record of three wins to zero over Gambit, which means Gambit would, of course, give them the edge in that position. Now, sixth place, no more ties are left. We have Copenhagen Wolves with 11 wins and 13 losses. And behind them, still chasing this playoff spot, we have Super Hard Crew with 10 wins and 14 losses. And down in the bottom, we have Millennium left alone, seven wins and 17 losses. Yeah, they've been saying that we just can't seem to get a win right now. It is time to highlight the five players who really managed to impress us in their positions this week. First up, it's Soaz at the top lane. He's had a 10.5 KDA versus as Renekton and his Giovanna. And you know, he might not like playing them, but with only two deaths and a ton of kills, Soaz showed why he's one of the best top laners around this week. And I love the way he's playing these bruises because he's always split pushing and it works for Alliance the way they split up everything and he needs to continue playing them. There's nothing else to say. Meanwhile, of course, Shook in that jungle, 77% kill participation. Everyone on Alliance has been stepping up their game, but 101 has been showing as much improvement as Shook. The past week, few weeks, he has shown us why players call him one of the best junglers in EU, and his two games as Evelyn really did all the talking for him. Any synergy with both the bot lane from Alliance and also, of course, with Froggen in the mid lane is absolutely beautiful, and that's one of the reasons for Shook. He's doing so well at the moment because Alliance as a team, everything is just working out for them in the early game. Talking to that mid laner, it is Froggen, of course. 917 and Z today versus SK Gaming. You just can't credit Alliance without crediting Froggen for his seventh unique champion in the eight game win streak. Froggen's pulled out Z. Something he didn't even touch back in Season 3, and he played it with perfection. Yeah, he was one of the most important players in the game. The fact he got ahead early on, the fact he could 1v1 Candy Panda early on, then he could end up to top lane, 1v1 Freddy and Shivana, it meant that there was no counterplay for SK Gaming against against Froggen on the Z. Well, the AD carry is Mr. Rales, and despite 
only going one and one. He ended up four. 0-12s in the two games he played this week. Mr. Rale has really stepped it up with his team, especially versus Gambit, going deathless in both those matches. No one bought the OP to AD carry like Mr. Rales. No, and again, Mr. Rales, it doesn't even matter how his team is doing. He will always get the farm he needs. He will always have perfect position in team fights. And that's what you need from a top AD carry. And he's definitely one of the best AD carries we have. Finally, of course, Yellow Star on support for Fanatic. He's had a 66% kill participation. That is damn impressive as a support. And that was, of course, in two games where he played Karma with the rotating roster of supports right now. Yellowstar stepped up his game to show us he's not just about tanky supports. Busting out that Karma twice this week, he was a key part in Fnatic's team engagement and disorienting play, especially against the Super Hot Group. Yeah, and the Karma really seems to favor Fnatic again. Fast mobility around the map, good rotations, and of course, laning with Reckless when you have such a strong support as Yellowstar and as Karma is absolutely perfect. But for their spectacular gameplay across the week, we have to decide on a most valuable player title. And this went to Alliance's support. It was Nif. He had 14 assists. Assists, And well, he last played Leona and Thresh, of course. You mentioned it. He played, what, six out of the seven of those yeah. wins. Crazy, crazy stuff. He had the LCS big play with his Thresh Lance, and of course, saving his Captain Froggen. But his plays didn't stop there. Even with Thresh, he finally taken away from him. Nif outpicked and went for Leona against the Morgana, by the way. I managed to speak to him afterwards, and he was like, what counters me? What counters me? Morgana. Oh, <laughs> crap. It wasn't too sure, but wow, he pulled off some great moves. And you called it at the time. Zenith Blade into a flash Q, crazy stuff, did it twice in that game. Yeah, he played it absolutely perfect. Every single time he engaged, he just baited out the Black Shield from and raided and just switched target instantly. Locked someone down, they got a kill. And when you can play Leona like this in laning phase against Morgana, a counter to you, well, you can play everything. And that's the thing for Nif at the moment. He's just making plays all the time and his team always talk so well about yeah. him, always saying, oh, Nif, he's playing fantastic at the moment. Yeah, I managed to speak to the team afterwards, and they all said Nif played godlike in that game, and we have to agree. So MVP for Nif, fantastic stuff. Remember, the LCS continues on Saturday in North America with starting off Dignitas versus Evil Geniuses, and that will be followed by Cantalogy Gaming facing Team Solo Mid, El Clasico in America. And then we have Team Coast against XDG, and the day will conclude with Curse against Cloud9. And those matches start at 8 p.m. Central European time, which is 12 noon Pacific. And we'll return to the European LCS with our final Super Week of the Spring Split, beginning with the LCS preview show next Tuesday, April 1st. And that will be at a very early time, ladies and gentlemen, as 4 30 p.m. Central European time. That is 7.30 a.m. You Americans that are watching over on Pacific time. The five big matches are Fnatic versus Alliance. Massive top clash straight away. Then it's Rockout versus the Super Hot Crew. And our final El Clasico of the Spring Split, SK Gaming versus Fnatic. And then it's on to Millennium against Super Hot Crew. And we'll run, we'll run things out with the Copenhagen Wolves against Gambit. And after those matches conclude, the European Challenger Series will begin a Spring Series playoff quarter finals. Yeah, lots of games to go and we'll take a quick break, but stay right here because the stage just behind us is being prepared for the second half of the European Challenger Spring Series Finals with the match between Ninjas in Pajamas and Departed to decide first and second place. Deficio and I will be calling this game, so stick around, we'll be right back.